Well, we're here with Jason Flores Williams, and he's here to talk to us about his new novel, Character and Fitness. Thank you so much for coming and talking to us. So you had uh, uh, multiple offers from publishers for your book. Yeah. And you're deciding to serialize it on the Brooklyn Rail. Why would you do that? First off, any the, the publishing industry is so dysfunctional mm -hmm. that you know the that to involve yourself with them is going to be a drain on a writer's energy during their lifetime. Mm -hmm. So my philosophy about publishing now is to get my stuff out there in a way that serves me personally so that mm -hmm. I don't have a drain on my own energy and then I'll let the publishing industry catch up with me when I'm dead. If the publishing industry is still around, whatever form it is, it can do whatever it wants. It seemed hypocritical to write a book mm -hmm. about not selling out, about mm -hmm. authenticity, one's own integrity, uh, the search for meaning in America, and about re the, the real suffering that people are going through, and then say, hey, go check me out, go buy this book at Barnes & Noble for 30 bucks. Yeah. It seemed very fake to do that. And it's, it seems to me that uh, that an artist's life and an art or an artist's vision should be in dialogue with how they express themselves commercially. An artist who says, "Well, I'm this and that," you know, I'm trying to remain, you know, in touch with things, but then, you know, sells all of his paintings for 120 million dollars. You know, there's there's a bit of ridiculousness there. It's absurd. Well, I, I think there's a difference between selling your paintings for 120 million dollars and having a product that's more accessible to a lot of people and I just worry that not enough people are going to be aware of your book and mm -hmm. won't hear this message that I think is a really awesome message to be putting out in America right now and, and I want more people to be able to read it and that's why I was kind of frustrated when I heard that this is what you were doing because I want to be able to say to someone go get this book because you got to read it and then let's talk about it you know whereas right. I I could, of course, and you know, most everyone's got access to the internet, but I just I wanted it to be something that more people would be because it's not done very often. Mm -hmm. I want pe more people to be talking about it. You well, know, I appreciate that. I think if you look at any writer who's actually trying to do real literature, mm -hmm. American literature about the American condition, and ask them, well, how was your publishing experience? Was mm -hmm. it fantastic? Did everybody hear about the book? No, mm -hmm. no. People, the the common experience in in putting out books that aren't necessarily you know commercial is that you do it, publishing industry, uh, you know, uh, jacks around with it for a while, there's mm -hmm. delays, there's all this kind of stuff, and then one day you're walking down the street and you look at a bookstore and it's in the remainder section. Mm -hmm. And you see it right there and you're like, well, that's great. Um, and I've done that already. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's let, just let the world catch up. Mm -hmm. And this is the way for me, just, I think maybe it's really very personal, is that this is the way that, um, that I feel best doing it. Mm -hmm. That I'm able to wake up and, and feel good about the entire process. Mm -hmm. And if and my experience is is that people who want to find it, they always do. So the last day of Mr. America branded you as sort of a I hate to use this word, but like a bad boy, you sure. know? And um character fitness and fitness is a little quieter. So are you are you still this bad boy? Are you are no, you I'm mellow? A bad, I'm like, a bad no, I'm a bad boy. <laughs> and I'll, I'll always will be my it's a struggle for me to fit in with the mores of the society. Mm -hmm. It always has been. You no, know, Character and Fitness explores different areas, and it, it is the tone and the volume of the novel mm -hmm. matches what happened, um, and how it felt to live behind that strip mall. Mm -hmm. It was kind of a lost, I don't know, uh, just quiet, sad, asphalt parking lots kind of time. That's mm -hmm. what it was. Last Time Miss America was about sex clubs and about, you know, really about the American condition, but it was a much louder book. All right, so you wrote one of your novels in the basement of a residential hotel. What was that like? What's, what's you know, what was that story? It's the Palo Alto Hotel in San Francisco in the Polk District. What happened was when I was uh, 24, 25, I ended up living there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, you know, all the romantic writer stuff, you know, that you're shooting for at that age, but it was real. And so I ended up living there, bread and cheese diet, <laughs> if that. And uh, that was, and so I wrote a book called The End of the West there. And I just uh, did it in uh, three weeks. And, and um, I just had a sense that that's what I had to do. And so I was living there, and you had these transvestites. I think that's when they started coming to my consciousness. This couple across the way who were always arguing. And so they were always, they were always breaking my concentration because I was writing like 19 hours a day. So I'd go over to their place and bang on the door, and then we'd get in these screaming fights. And then I'd come back across the way. And uh, right, and this place was just horrible. I mean, like, like there was like uh, I remember like about a week into this place living there, uh, I found like uh, syringes under the bed and stuff <laughs> like that. I mean, it was nasty. 
But it was, um, that was it. So, yeah, <laughs> so I wrote The End of the West there and self-published it in San Francisco. Um, what are your big influence writers? I mean, I know you said On the Road. With Kerouac, the for yeah. sure. Melville, Camus, Dostoevsky, uh, Michelle Welbeck. He's a French writer. He's a contemporary French writer. He's brilliant. Well, Jason, thank you so much for, for talking with us and inspiring us. And I, I really appreciate no, it. No, thank cool. you. Thank you. It's nice for you to come here. Cool. Cool.